What is cracking, Hope Nation? It is your friendly neighborhood, Kevin Hines, back for a new round of Ask Kevs. And we're coming at you live in studio at the Bat Cave. What? I don't know. Anyway, here's the thing. Bat Cave, this isn't DC. We love Marvel. What are we talking about? Let's get cracking here in just a moment. Spider Man. I don't know. I, okay. Ask Kevs, another round. Uh, and the question of the day is LB, producer extraordinaire, break it away. Take it away. Shake it away. Last year, you made a decision about your medication. Yes. It had a big impact on your life. Yes. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so let me, let me, let me preface this with um, uh, medication that we take for our mental well-being, a lot of us, is very important to our stability. And it's hard to cope with having to take medication for psychiatric disorders um, when, you, when you feel like you don't want to and you feel like you want to just be yourself. Uh, but, but I had found a medication regimen that was working really well with me and for me uh, uh, two years ago. And I developed a skin disease having second degree burns from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head, bloody blisters throughout my entire body. My skin integrity failed 98%. That meant that if I took my finger and I brushed it against this nice cotton shirt, uh, I cut it deep, um, really deep. Um, my skin was translucent beneath the burns. It was a really bad situation. And I felt excruciating pain, feeling like knives and needles were coming from my bones through my skin across my entire body. I had to be taken off all psych meds within 24 hours by a doctor's orders uh, because one of my medications had been poisoning my organs. Um, when that happened, I had a 73-hour hallucinatory withdrawal-based psychosis, which means I saw and heard things that didn't exist to anyone but me because of how quickly I was taken off of the meds, but it was to save my life. I was on the tipping point of what's called Stevens-Johnson syndrome. If you get Stevens-Johnson syndrome, you have a 1% chance of survival. I had already been a 1% chance of surviving the Golden Gate Bridge jump. I wasn't going to do it again. Um, fought everything I could, worked out everything I could do with the skin creams and skin healing lotions, things like that. Nothing was working. Went to Emory Hospital. They couldn't figure it out. Um, one of the best hospitals in the country. Um, doctor after doctor, dermatologist after dermatologist. No one could figure out what was wrong with me except for the fact that my, my, my organs had been poisoned by, by one of the medications. So after all that occurred and I finally healed the skin and got back to a better balance, you know, skincare regimen, um, I was still in quite a bit of physical pain. Uh, and, and when I say quite a bit, I mean it was excruciating. It would be intermittent, but when it came through, it would be like fire on my skin and it was horrible. And so I made a grave mistake. I, I had gotten back on medications that were positively helping my mental health. And I decided that and it was a, a compulsion more than a decision because of the pain. I went off meds and didn't tell anybody. After my skin disease and the removal of the meds and putting back on meds and getting back on a good regimen, I just didn't, I just was, I was fed up with the physical pain. And I went off meds, I didn't tell anybody. It was right around Thanksgiving of last year. And I almost, I, well, I ruined Thanksgiving for my entire family because of my, what happened next was a huge manic episode. And that manic episode would last for the better part of a year. What we know about mania uh, is that if it lasts longer than a couple of weeks, it does what's akin to brain damage. It changes you as a person. And it absolutely altered my state of mind, my state of being, my well-being, and affected everybody around me. It affected my relationships, um, and we're going to talk about mania in the next episode, but it was, it was intense, and here's my recommendation. If you're taking psychiatric or psychotropic medications, you've been prescribed them by your doctor, please, please, if you're considering going off those meds, do it with a doctor's perspective and through clinical care through your GP or your primary care physician or your psychiatrist or psychologist or all of the above. Loop everybody in so you're, not, so you're doing this in a safe way and it's not dangerous. I did it in a dangerous way. It nearly destroyed my life. It almost led me to take my life. A lot of things happened. You see, I was, again, chronically suicidal last year as well. So please, take care of your better well-being. And if you're being, if you're being placed on medications and you're upset about it, 
understand the ramifications of going off them cold turkey. It's very dangerous. Definitely see a doctor, titrate down and do it the right way or don't do it at all. Make sure you're safe with your medications so you can always be well and be here tomorrow and every day after that. So one other thing, Kevin, that comes up is you were exercising a lot because of the yeah. physical pain. How yeah. did that affect the medications that you were taking? Ooh, good question, Lauren Breen. Uh, yeah, so that really made a huge effect. I was exercising uh, 16 times a day in 13 to 20 minute increments, which is over three hours of exercise a day, but I wasn't doing it properly. There are bodybuilders that exercise three, six hours a day, but they do it properly and they do it uh, appropriately and they, they have a complete total regimen. I was just going ham, like full throttle ahead, exercising that often a day, it was metabolizing my medication in my system and it was metabolize and it, and it was, uh, I would be drinking uh, gallons and gallons of water which were flushing out the minerals in my system. That said, when those two things were occurring, my meds were dissipating. They weren't even being a part of my regimen because I would take them in the morning but I would completely wash them away during the workouts and during the water intake. Um, two very unhealthy ways to live your life. So I learned about this, I was educated in it, and I, and I stopped. And I started working out on a, on a more calm, cool, and collected basis, um, gained some weight back, um, feel healthy and happy right now, and I was able to uh, exercise 23 minutes a day, twice a day, because it leads to 12 hours of better mood, twice a day, 24 hours of better mood. Um, that's a study out of the University of Georgia, by the way, in case you're wondering. So in, in this situation, I found a way to better balance my brain health, to be on medications and not wash them out of my system, and to exercise appropriately so I would feel better and not feel, um, not, and not leap into a manic high because of the excess of working out. So last question to do with medication. There is a common myth out there that if you take medication, you're gonna be fixed. What is your experience mm -hmm. with that? Do you still have symptoms? Medication is not the end all be all. It is not the, uh, one single thing that's going to stop or cure your mental illness. Medication is necessary for some people. It doesn't work for everybody. I found medication continuously over time that works for me. And in taking the medication, I take it with 100% accuracy at the same time every day without fail. If I do that, if I take it with 100% accuracy at the same time every day without fail within a two hour period, it, it helps me stay balanced. Um, and, uh, it's not the one-stop shop. You need to do things like have regular therapy or therapeutic programming. You need to talk about your issues and be honest about them with someone who cares if you don't have the availability or the finances to go see a therapist. You need to be reading every single book you can about the treatment of your diagnoses. You need to be actively invested in your mental well-being by recognizing that mental health and brain health and physical health are all just health, as First Lady Rosalind Carter said 60 years ago. Um, so if we can be adamant in our better well-being, that means our mind, brain, behavioral, mental health, and spiritual health, um, we can live a, a life with great and true wellness. I call it the art of wellness. Um, if you want to know more about my personal regimen, uh, you can go to this channel right here on youtube.com slash Kevin Hines and you go to the playlist, The Art of Wellness. There are 10 steps, 12 videos, um, all designed in three to five minute increments to help you balance your brain health today. Uh, people are saying from as far as Peru, Africa, China, and Japan, and America, and here in America, that following this program for a six to nine month period is dramatically improving their mental health. I want it to help you. Please check out that playlist today. And if you haven't done it yet, hit subscribe, click the bell, give me that thumbs up right here. There'll be an extra thumb right here and uh, share it with at least 10 friends. Quick add to it. Can you kind of explain how the first time they prescribed you that wasn't magic medicine? Like the yeah. struggle, but in a positive way yeah. on how it is trial and error and you have to plug and play and be willing to, you know what I mean? You bet. Thank you, David. Erickson Tyshawn the Great. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Um, that's David in the background, filmographer extraordinaire, um, asking the question, uh, what was it like to first be on meds and be kind of a guinea pig and having like this med going in, that med coming out, and 
it, it was difficult. You know, I was 17 years of age when I was first put on meds. I was put on 14 pills a day. Um, but let's be honest, I was not adequately following a treatment plan. I was binge drinking until blackout on the weekends. I was taking my pills one day and not the next, seven days and not for seven days or, 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 or even worse. And uh, it wasn't until I became serious in my third psych ward stay about medications and, 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 and adamant that I take them with 100% accuracy at the same time every day and being helped by the regimen routine that you follow in a psych ward, it wasn't until then that things started to sh shape and change. And it was a decade before um, I really had, um, at that time, perfected the meds in my system. A lot of meds up and downs, a lot of changes in meds, but they were done properly with, with a, a clinician's perspective and a clinician's help. And that's where things would get better. I would find medications that work best for me um, most of the time, and I would, you know, I got to live better in that situation um, and feel better and and stay well. Uh, it's only been when I've gone off my meds, unbeknownst to people around me, that I've really had complete downfalls. Um, so, my point to you is this: as David said, there's no one answer with medication, but what you can do is keep the good fight, keep working hard, understand that they're meant to help you, they can help you, and they will help you with time. And lastly, Kev, what would you say the difference has been with your experience working with a psychiatrist who can prescribe medication and a psychopharmacologist? Oh, okay. All right. So, great question we have. What is the difference between uh, working with a psychiatrist and a psychopharmacologist. The difference is the psychopharmacologist, the difference is the psychiatrist can prescribe medications and give you a diagnosis, um, but they don't understand uh, the nuances of the body. They don't understand usually gut to brain health, and they don't understand how different med regimens and different med dosages can affect someone in a different, different weight or size of the human being. So, a psychopharmacologist understands all of those things. They understand how food plays a part in affecting your meds and how meds affect your foods. They understand how um, your size, your physical size or, or weight of, is affected by how much of a dosage you are being given by a particular med. If you're not looking at all of these things, it is detrimental to the person taking the meds um, lifestyle and well-being. It can cause damage. Um, and so n having my doctor who I'm lucky enough to avail of, and some people are not, um, having my doctor uh, be able to deduce all of these things simultaneously um, and, and, and put the best regimen together um, with the best advice, with a more thorough education, um, is a, a wonderful thing for me and my mental well-being because she helps me get to a stable place every time I fall off uh, the wagon or, uh, or the horse. I get back on, I keep moving forward. Hit subscribe, click the bell, thumbs up, share with a friend. Several, many, lots. Bam, we're out of here. See ya.